Hey Robot fans, welcome back to the build. Not gonna lie, I was pretty broken up about having to post a non-completed broken mountain board in my last video, so I'm coming in hot with a little teaser of me riding. This is just a little taste though, let's see how we got to this point. I've made some major changes to the board here. First up is the drivetrain. In the last video I set up a 5 to 1 gear ratio with a 12 tooth pulley on the motor and a 60 tooth pulley on the wheel. That gave me a perfectly acceptable top speed of about 25 miles per hour with these oversized tires. This setup was great on paper but in practice I needed these idlers to get the proper belt mesh on the motor pulley and this was causing a lot of unnecessary friction and tension in the drivetrain. So I switched out my 12 tooth motor pulley for a 24 tooth reducing my gear ratio from 5 to 1 to 2.5 to 1. This completely eliminated the need for idlers because I now have a 9 tooth gear mesh with the belt. This will reduce the friction in my drive but it will also increase the board's top speed to an unmanageable 50 miles per hour. I am not getting on a board that can go 50 miles per hour. However, what's driving these motors to that speed is my dual electronic speed controller. Currently the board is set up to receive power from 10 LiPo cells wired in series. By making a few solder changes on the circuit boards I can refigure the ESCs to run off of 6 cells. This reduces the amount of power going to the motors and returns my top speed back down to a manageable 30 miles per hour. As an added bonus, I have a large capacity 6 cell LiPo on hand with double the capacity of my 10 cell series. So I'm actually going to get two times the battery life off of one battery. This also leaves an empty bay to put some extra electronics in. The only trade-off here is that I need to increase the size of my battery holders. The next major change is in the way that that drivetrain is mounted. In the previous video I built this elaborate aluminum plastic hybrid cube assembly which ultimately failed. Oof. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of this and move the motors down and try to keep everything more in line with the main mounting point. I'm also going to get rid of a lot of the plastic. Rather than use these printed cubes as end pieces to connect the 2020 extrusion, I'm going to drill through and tap the extrusions to make a metal on metal corner held together with more metal. These plastic L brackets are going to be replaced with metal, and this plastic clamp piece I made is going to be replaced with metal that screws through even more metal. Long story short, this whole thing is pretty metal. The only part of the drivetrain that is still going to be printed is the main motor mount because I can actually make this large and in charge enough to support all of the force that's going to be applied to it. Our new larger battery holder now has some room to breathe with the lower assembly and all that's left to do is reattach our tires and retry our weighted test. Okay, here we are with the same 90 pound test from last time and the drive is holding up great. If you notice right here, there's a little jitter at the start that's a little reminiscent of the jitter that ultimately broke the last drivetrain. I've noticed this is coming from the ESCs not giving perfectly equal power to each motor right at the start. It seems like one motor gets a little jolt quicker than the other, so it's causing one side to pull a bit more on some of the starts. I would say that this happens about 30 to 40% of the time, but it's not affecting the drive or the mechanics, and everything seems to be working well, so I think it's fine. I bought some pretty serious padding. I've never been on a skateboard going quite this fast before and I have no idea what's in store for the initial startup in terms of acceleration so I'm preparing for some serious speed. I got myself ready, I bent my knees to brace for the inevitable g-forces I'd no doubt be feeling, and I'm off. <laughs> yep, unfortunately what you are looking at here is top speed. The remote control has four speed settings and this is the highest setting with the pedal to the metal. I had assumed that the speed calculators I was using had compensated for an average sized person, and yes, I'm slightly larger than the average sized person, but wow, this is way off, what a bummer. But I refuse to allow this video to end on another low note and I know exactly what I need to do. I took the board back in, I desoldered my previous solder changes to the ESCs, I velcroed the previous 10 cell series back into the now way too large compartments, made some precise modifications to the outer box and I got back on the board. This is what I'm talking about. The difference between 6 cells and 10 cells is insane. I'm now on the lowest speed setting and I'm super nervous to even tap this one out. So if you're watching this and thinking, that's really not that fast, that's all because of this big baby right here. But I'm loving every second of it. Believe it or not, folks, this is my happy face. The trucks are nice and loose so you can do some turns and have some real fun with the speed. We have a working electronic mountain board. This is awesome. 
I'm planning a third video where I'm going to be adding in some completely unnecessary electronics as I love to do, and I will also update that battery compartment to make everything a little more custom to the smaller batteries. I'm also going to be making a couple more upgrades based on my first few rides here to make this board off-road capable, and we'll see if in the next video I can take it on some trails, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.